Okay guys, today we have what we call the Confederate musket or the mystery musket. This is a gun we featured on the channel before. I'll leave a link to that video. There go the doves. We should be dove hunting. But anyway, I'll link to the video. I've actually had this gun out. We've talked about it to uh, some extent. And we took it squirrel hunting and got some squirrels with it. But what we're dealing with here is a gun we purchased out of a museum, I believe, in Georgia. Uh, my brother actually bought it, so I don't know a lot about it. The uh, museum curator told us that this was a Confederate copy of an infield gun that they had picked up somewhere and this gun has had a, a rough life it really has i mean it's been took care of but it's been polished so much the markings are completely gone uh it's had a few replacement screws put into it someone has cut the barrel down and bored it to a smooth bore 69 caliber and attempted to uh, i believe octagon the barrel with a file the gun is still sound Everything still works on it, but it's lived a rough life. Somebody's cut the butt plate off and put a piece of tin here for a butt plate. You know, they cut the stock down. It's a little rough there, but it still works. After, you know, 150 plus years, this gun is still running just fine. We're going to test it today because, you know, we're going to be careful with it. We're going to use light loads, but we're going to test some birdshot patterns with it. Whoever bored that to smooth bore didn't do a very good job and got a little bit off on one side there. But... It seems to work, like I said, actually has a front sight. And so uh, without further ado, let's try this out with some bird shot. We're gonna test some bird shot. We're gonna test some swan shot. We're gonna do all this at a paper target at 25 yards. We're gonna stick with an 85 grain load and we are also going to do it as semi-square load, I guess you might say. Okay, so 85 grains going right down the bore. We're going to do this a couple different ways. First of all, we're going to do it the old fashioned way, which is to take some of our wasp nests. Like I said before, this stuff's pretty dry. I need to harvest some new stuff, but I'm not too worried about a fire today. We're going to take that wasp nest. We're going to set that right down on top of the powder as a cushion. This is how they'd have done it in the old days. Then we're going to reach in here and get our handy dandy bird shot with our historically accurate oregano birdshot dispenser. I'm gonna fill that same measure up to about the same spot. There's a gun flint in there. And there we go, pour that right down on top of that wasp nest. And then we're just gonna take some more wasp nest good bunch of it when it's dry like this because it kind of turns to powder I'm just gonna kind of set it down there and just punch it so it fits the bore just right there we go here I got a good seal going down right on top of the powder there we go or that's not a powder sorry right on top of the shot okay now prefer on this gun to use remington number 11s but we forgot to bring them so we're using cci number 11s nipples just a little big for them so have to set them with a screwdriver like you would on a cap and ball revolver all right now here we go 25 yards this is bird shot with wasp nest wadding. Let's see what happens. Probably set the cap. Nope. Let's go take a look. It's a pretty decent spread. All right. Well, the winds are crinkling us around here, but as you can see, we covered the whole board. It's a little too wide for squirrels at 25. That's for sure. I can attest to that. They sometimes they seem to slip right through that pattern and definitely too wide for birds so what do we do next let's try some fiber wads and see if we can bring that thing down a little bit okay guys i just dumped the powder forgot to turn the camera on so what we're going to do is we're going to take and this is how i like to do it i will take a wad and tear it in two then i will take this big wad right here this is actually for 
69 caliber so it's a little or sorry this is actually for a 75 caliber so it's a little big but that's fine if you're using an oversized wad take your rubber mallet start it it'll cut you a little ring kind of like loading a cap and ball pistol and take your ram rod and finish it off that's a big cushion wad down on 85 grains of powder now we're going to take and get our same load square load of bird shot by the way this is six number six shot Right there, it's about the same. We're gonna dump that down there. Now, this next part, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can use actual gun lube, or you can take this thinner card, which is actually just a piece of the wad, spit lube it. And after you got that soft, a little spit on it, go ahead and start it down there. Like I said, that top part was way thinner than the bottom part. So, it's more like a card than a wad. Because if you choose two thick ones, you'll blow a hole in your pattern. 85 grains, the cushion wad, and an over top of a shot wad. Here we go. Okay, guys, I'm looking at it here. I don't believe it improved the... Uh, don't believe that those wads improved it much we'll do another video with the sky chief load but uh we're gonna go ahead and put this down it's obviously over the whole paper we're gonna go ahead we're going to put this get a new paper target up there we're gonna try some swan shot which i know won't pattern well but it ought to at least be interesting we're gonna do this the same way we just did with the 85 grain charge Now we're going to do a historic load. It means we're going to take our wasp nest, tear it up just a touch. We're going to cushion over the powder with the wasp's nest. Tamp that down pretty good. Now we're going to use our swan shot. And what this is, let me show the camera. These are just droplets that you make with your, uh, we did it with our Lee uh, 420 bottom feed, bottom pour, and it just drops it into cold water. I have a whole video of that over on our Rumble channel, which is 11 Bang Bang 2. I haven't sifted this stuff yet, so I've got everything in here from probably a double lot buckshot pellet size all the way down to number nines and it's just going to be a mixture so without further ado a lot of people would uh actually sift this stuff to uh, make it uh you know more pattern better as a piece of shot but in the old days they would have just loaded it probably as they made it which they made it in several different ways a lot of time to pot over a campfire with holes in it. Now there's not going to be a great pattern because there's, like I said, every kind of, every different size of shot in there. But if you ever get in a bad way and you can't get bird shot, the end of the world or whatever, this stuff may be what you have to take down a swan. Hence why they call it swan shot. It all come out of there. Yep. Like I said, this is going to be a really rough pattern, I have a feeling. But it'll put some big holes in the cardboard. Like I said, go check out our other channel over on Rumble because you can't do things like that on YouTube too well. But there's a video over there on how to make this swan shot. It's a historical thing and really saves you some money. All right, swan shot. Heading for the cardboard. Let's go see what we got. All right, guys, 25 yards. We got one of those swan shots on target, which isn't good enough. So let's take this up to 10 yards, see what we do any better. Okay, guys, we moved her up to 15 yards. Let's try this again. 
This is a swan shot with wasp nest. Big load. Let's see if we put a few more BBs on that. Okay guys, so we did a little better. I could see this hole here, which was up. I was aiming about right here. And at 15 yards, we got, uh, it's not a great pattern, but you know, if you was going after a turkey back in the day and that was what you had, it would work. So, one more thing before we quit here. Let's set up a couple bottles and see if we can knock any bottles down with swan shot. Swan shot wadded with wasp nest, 15 yards. Let's see if we can take out a, bo a, a bottle or two. One and a half, yay! Okay guys, uh, Caleb wanted me to point out that the inside of this bore on this gun is done very rough. And so I don't know if that has an issue, causes an issue with that pattern being so bad. We're gonna try that swan shot in a few other uh, modern replica smooth bores and see how much, how it does. But you know what? Uh, I guess if that was a turkey's head right there and neck at that range, we'd have killed him. Anyway, that's all we have today for the Confederate mystery musket. Trust in God and keep your powder dry. Bye.